Across the globe, it's proving to be a hot, sweaty summer. The heat is more than uncomfortable. It's life-threatening, sparking wildfires and driving temperatures to unbearable new highs. It's also an inescapable part of our collective future. We're doing a deep dive into the short and long-term ramifications. The CBC's David Thurton is on this story for us in Ottawa, and Natalie, Natalie Collada is handling it in Toronto for us. So, David, let's start with you first. July has seen record temperatures across the planet. Scientists are tracking all of this very closely. What are they saying? Well, yes, yeah, certainly. July has been a month of records if you've been cre keeping track. In the first week of this month, we had the hottest day on the planet since we've been keeping records. And now scientists are projecting that this month, July, will be the hottest July ever and the hottest month ever that this planet has seen since we've been keeping records. So they are projecting this, they're basing this, Arthi, on, of course, the temperatures that we've seen over the last couple of days, but also the forecast that we're going to see over the next couple of days because July isn't over, but they feel pretty confident scientists, both from the European Space Agency, the World Meteorological Service, and also uh, other climate scientists who've been crunching the numbers on their own, they feel confident in saying that this month will be the hottest July ever, the hottest month uh, that this planet has ever seen. So average temperatures for July, they're saying, have increased by about 1.3 degrees Celsius to 1.7 degrees Celsius, somewhere within that range. So here's one of the climate scientists who crunched those numbers uh, and, is, and is explaining why they decided to release them. This month is so outrageously uh, warm compared to all the previous years that it's very easy to just say already, okay, this is the record that we, that we are going to have. We may as well wait for another week, but the result isn't going to change. So the results are so clear that this is the hottest month since we've been keeping records. They decided to release that information. Although we've seen average temperatures increase by as much as 1.7 uh, over this month, it does not mean, Arthur, that we've blown past that Paris Agreement target, that 1.5 degrees Celsius, striving to keep global average temperatures below increasing above 1.5 degrees Celsius. Although we have surpassed it this month, it doesn't mean that we've blown past the Paris target. But it does mean that we're inching closer to that and more action is needed, they say. So then, David, is there anything we can do to reverse or limit these extreme temperatures? What are scientists saying about that? Well, scientists and the Intergovernmental governmental Panel on Climate Change have been very clear. Uh, our emissions, 90% of them, have been caused by uh, burning fossil fuels, so oil and gas. So they're saying that the solution, uh, according to some of these scientists, is to phase out uh, the burning of fossil fuels and to do that on a gradual basis each year as we head to 2030 and as we head to 2050 where a lot of companies and governments have hit those net zero targets. So one of the scientists who was at that briefing uh, for July being the hottest month spoke a little bit about that. Let's have a listen. But without human induced climate change, these heat waves would have been so rare that it would be the statistical equivalent of impossible. So climate change is a huge driver here. So, yeah, they're calling for action on this. A number of countries are meeting right now in India. In, in fact, our environment minister, Stephen Gilbo, is in India right now for meetings ahead of the G20, where there is really this push to get the globe to agree to phasing out fossil fuels. Canada wants the phasing out of unabated fossil fuels, so fossil fuels that we can't capture, we can't suck the emissions out. So there's going to be, you know, a lot of people watching to see over the next coming days, over the next coming months, as G20 builds to, you know, that climate conference, COP18, whether or not there is that global agreement to, you know, phase out either fossil fuels or unabated fossil fuels. Thanks for the latest on this, David. That is the CBC's David Thurton reporting in Ottawa.